Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Hello everyone, welcome back live here. The Cube is in Seattle for DockerCon 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Brian Gracely, Wikibon Chief Analyst for the Cloud. Our next guest is Amy Lewis, Comms Ninja. Welcome to the Cube, good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, it's good to be here. So we'd love to get down and dirty and talk about DockerCon because the growth has just been, been astonishing from Great open source, great community. Now you got all the vendors who see magic here with the developers. Mm -hmm. NetApp is one of them. Uh, HP's doing deals with them. IBM's got an event on Wednesday. Why the magic with the developers now with the commercialization? And do you see any potential hot spots there? Is it all goodness, all great and all the time? What, what's your thoughts? <laughs> Well, it's, it's my first SoccerCon as well. Um, obviously, NetApp has been involved before. SolidFire has been interested in this community. We have uh, a focus on developer advocacy. So I, I think a lot of it is just saying the world is changing. We know that technology is changing. We know the market is evolving. And developers are not just uh, the people in the basement that nobody talks to anymore. They've got storage needs. They've got uh, needs. They, they don't care about infrastructure, true, but they do care about what are their apps going to run on? How is it going to function? How can their life be made easier? So I think that um, there's a, a natural and evolving synergy. Yeah, I mean, you, you're managing a team now of developer advocates. Like, what are they doing? We hear that term thrown around a lot. What, what, what are they doing with developers? What are developers telling them? It, well, you know, there's a lot of t-shirts and pizza. That's yeah. important. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> can't, can't be understated. Stickers, very important in the sticker market. But um, I, it, it really, in all seriousness, it is, it's let the code speak for it, you. You know, it's a community where your work and your contributions are what speak for you. Um, and it, it's, it's, you can't put your finger on a particular problem that's being solved, per se. So I think that's part of what might be frustrating to traditional marketing or traditional sales because it is, um, it is a process of a thousand pebbles. There isn't this one big moment where you have you know, this one big problem that you, you have a traditional uh, you know, rollout or et cetera, et cetera. It is, it is constant contribution, it's constant yeah. engagement. It's that, what does this API do? This solves a very particular problem. Yeah. If that makes sense, it's just, it's a different approach. One of the things that SolidFire did was amazing was they had the all flash, they stick to their guns and really had high performance, been following that success. They come into NetApp, um, great leader in storage, but they're trying yep. to reinvent themselves. Now with cloud, the word composal has been kicked around, certainly HP puts that out there, but the word infrastructure at code has always been kind of like more for provisioning, chef, puppet, you know, configuration management, and some orchestration here and there for the most part. But now for the first time you're seeing real infrastructure as code mm -hmm. from a developer standpoint where stuff actually works. Right. And then you don't have to actually get back in the weeds and tweak it. That's the nirvana for infrastructure as code. Your thoughts on the timing of where that's at now, I mean, that seems to be more and more uh, the case. Um, certainly they got to get in and do some configuration. We talk about uh, security and orchestration that's being worked on, but for the most part, we are living in a world now of infrastructure as code. Do you see it that way, and your thoughts? Well, I think that we are less and less tolerant of being told things work this way because this is the way it's always worked. So, uh, you know, blame the millennials in a good way, maybe. But uh, this, it, we've all become a little bit more millennial, right? Where we want, we want our apps to perform a certain way. We want things as we want them when we want them. So I think that there is no going back. That genie doesn't go back in the bottle. I think we are, um, at an early stage of it, I like how you're putting it, but I think that we uh, we will see this. This will become more and more the norm. Um, and that classic, you know, pioneers, uh, towns, uh, town planners, settlers kind of model. We're going to move to settling very quickly. That we've got people pioneering in that field, but we'll move to settling where that is the new normal. And we'll see what was considered maybe more traditional um, companies kind of entering that space because they're it's it's saying there is a new way of doing business. At the end, the dollar speaks, and you want to be where the customers are and where the needs are. So the, the industry will move where the customers demand. And customers are getting trained in these new ways. Yeah, SolidFire had a really big position in OpenStack. They were doing really well with service providers. What are you, what, what's, what's SolidFire teaching NetApp about how to sell, how to talk to those types of customers? Because it was about APIs, and it was about moving quickly, which is very different than most storage stuff. Like, what are you guys teaching them as the acquisition evolves? 
Um, I, I think there's a lot of lessons to go both ways. I mean, the benefits of an acquisition is everybody gets to learn something. And, uh, and so it really is sort of an expansion of a portfolio approach. Um, I think part of what's been interesting is that there are, uh, there's not as much overlap as one would think. So I think that's always a concern when you come in. So you've got, again, this portfolio sort of broaden the spectrum. Uh, I, I also think that you've got um, an interesting idea that uh, just as you were saying, John, that you sell to different customers within the same um, large entity. So because we do think like a service provider, if you will, and, and look to enterprises that have their IT departments function like service providers, we often hit a different customer set within a, a established customer base, which I think is a really different way of thinking as well. So you might be selling to John and we might be selling to Jane. Um, and, and that's been kind of an, a, a learning um, that we've all been going through, that there are different people who buy and need storage for different purposes. Back to that in, you know, yeah. infrastructure as code kind of concept. You know, the interesting thing that we're watching and here is just the growth has been great, and obviously we're big fans of Docker, so we love the success of the company and also the ecosystem. But the question of the management software, you're seeing the announcements today, orchestration, simplicity, and the democratization were a little bit over the top fluff, but you know, um, the management seems to be key. So I want to ask you the question. You've seen the historical view of management, you know, down from storage, LUNs, to you know, servers, and now networking, and now infrastructure as code. How has the, the management software side of things changed in the past five years? To, and where it is today? What do you see as the major, if someone in IT say, hey, what's the big deal with this management stuff? I, had, I used to do this like this before. What's been the big change over? Um, I, I, again, I think you move right from pioneer to, to settler as quickly as possible, right? So you've got uh, where before it was always single pane of glass. I would ask you guys, like, when's the last time you heard single pane of glass? Or I think we're, we've moved to a place. Of, IBM loves that term. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that we've got. Um, I think we've moved to use the management tool that achieves the job you need it to achieve, and the idea of doing it by hand, so to speak, has evaporated completely. That the the concept of some the ability to manage to get to the scale that you need is, is understood and we're in, in settling phase, if you will. But uh, whereas before people would kind of cobble something together, I don't think that's, there's so many options, there's so many, um, there's so many ways to do it. So there's new, so many changes that have gone on. It's almost a reboot everything, security to yeah. identity. Yeah, I mean, again, the conversations I think back three, four years ago that I was having in terms of you know what people did, it, it's not even the same conversation now. The, the, the whole, it, in, in what way? Like this because it was so speeds and feeds. Now it's different, or what's the difference? Uh, it's no. I haven't heard it was the year of VDI a single time, for instance. <laughs> no, but but it, it's. <laughs> I I think that. It, what is amazing is what you think is cutting edge moves so quickly. If you, if you were to draw that graph of yeah. what is cutting edge and what seems impossible moves so quickly to the norm, and then people demand more, demand more, demand more. So it, you know, any number of topics, and management planes being one of them. You know, which controller you use is kind yeah. of, it, it's almost a bygone conversation. I got to ask both of you guys, Brian in particular, to comment on this, because we, Dave and I, Dave and I, and I always talk about DevOps, because we much love DevOps, but then, you know, ops dev, because we're swinging back into the world where the ops guys are certainly looking at the security. We were talking about that before right. we came on camera. And identity management, all these things are coalescing into a whole new fabric. Mm -hmm. Composable, Lego blocks, whatever word you want to use, it's really a cool developer environment. Mm -hmm. But now these are operational challenges. I mean, you were talking about putting malware in a container. Yeah. That's cool, that's a great <laughs> use of security. <laughs> Scale your security um, hacks. Well, well look. I don't know if it was a year ago or two years ago, you, you had did an interview with Pat Gelsinger and he said, hey look, you know, DevOps is really sort of a little bit of dev and a lot of ops. That's what a lot of this show is, right? It's, mm -hmm. I want the developers to go fast. The only way that it's going to happen is the ops have got to get at least reasonably faster. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Amy talks to people all the time trying to change their career. A lot of VMware people are trying to evolve. I mean, there's a, you know, it's, it's the classic thing where you go, I know this has got to happen. I've got a huge uh, it's workforce. It's not a bad thing, though. It's I mean, not a bad, look, it's evolution. It always happens in tech. It's just, you know, people sometimes want to control it more than, than it, get, can, you know, it gets forced on them. But, uh, Amy, your thoughts, because this is not actually a bad thing. Operations is what runs the business. So it used to have a negative connotation in the sense that they were always the no ops. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> no you to everything, right? But now with DevOps becoming kind of standard, the operational cycles kind of getting cutting edge. Your thoughts I, on that? I would agree. I think it's, uh, it's uh, 
evolve or die, to be honest, and uh, which may sound harsh, but <laughs> it's, it, it is harsh. But I, I think people have to evolve their skill sets. They have to ev evolve how they do it because you talk about security, for instance. Like all of us can be a security breach at any one time. And you know, with automation, with containers, you can, you can be malicious at scale more easily than you ever have been before. So yeah. respect for the people who have to run the operational side, but the demands on are, are extreme. And so you're not yeah. looked at as the DMV. You have to evolve. Yeah, I mean, the security is like an app. I mean, an issue because the, all the messaging from the Docker, performance at scale, security by default, you can actually substitute hacking. Hacking at scale. Yeah. You know, <laughs> As a service. It's highly pause. scalable. It's no longer just an avocado. <laughs> no, but this is a real issue. This has yeah. to get to the, to the data layer, is it down in the storage? I mean, these are cutting edge computer science DevOps well, questions. And, and something somebody said to me about security a long time ago, and then in an age of paper where uh, digital security was less of a concern, it's just one bump of a UPS truck away from being a problem. Like, happened to me, you know, you've got a package where all your social security numbers fly off the truck, security breach. And, and we live in an age where that scale times 10 million. Like it's always yeah. possible. So operations, it, I admit, it's a more challenging role than it's ever been. But yeah. uh, it, it has to be, um, it, it can't, people will work around. We have so many ways to work around that if operations doesn't move at the speed of the dev side yeah. of the house, then you've got automatic problems. Certainly as a revenue model, Brian, right now for a lot of people in the ecosystem to add value well, it's, look, look, security is one of those things where people don't spend a lot of money. People, you know, there's an old joke that used to say companies spend more money on coffee than they spend on, <laughs> on security, you know, in, in a big business. But nowadays, with, with, at least with security, I can say, look, if we're hacked and I lose X million credit cards, I know exactly what that's going to cost my business, if, assuming I'm still in business. <laughs> I, can spend, I can spend security money against that risk. It's like buying insurance, mm. uh, you know, saying you're going to make cloud native applications go faster, I don't always know how to quantify yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Security, I can quantify well, it. Well, ransomware there's, there's is booming right now. I ransomware, mean, yeah. Some people are saying I mean, ransomware is the, the next Y2K problem that no one's talking about. Yeah, we saw I mean, Blue Coat just get acquired for $5 billion. Yeah. Lumio's doing great. Skyport Systems is EMC's doing well. EMC's selling twice the gear. Yeah. I mean, it's just adding on more and more security with the hardware. So again, this is cutting edge. Yeah, All absolutely. right, final thoughts. Amy, your, your vibe of the show right now is what? Feral, I know it's day one, but like, what's your take? It's your first time here at DockerCon, vis-a-vis -vis other industry shows, whether it's industry or open source, your thoughts? Um, well, one of my, obviously, passion issues, I've seen more women here than I've seen at several conferences I've been at in, uh, in under an hour. So let's hear it for uh, the women who are doing yeah. development and are out doing the jobs. So uh, that's been very right. impressive. Um, and you know what, there's a great energy. I love the, the community atmosphere here. It's always great to be part of a technology that's on a growth cycle yeah. because um, it, you get an openness, you get a friendliness, and you get just kind of a willingness to learn. We haven't moved to a, uh, um, I, I, we're not cynics yet. We haven't moved into the cynicism <laughs> that sometimes can accompany um, things that have been going for a while. Oh, so like it's an open really stack great. or something like that, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's, it's been a great, I, I'm excited to be here and it's been really great to just have conversations with people. Well thank you for sharing your uh, insight here on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks so looking forward to more content here, wall to wall coverage. We are here live in Seattle for DockerCon 2016's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracie, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>